Uh, so this is the last session of the last session, I understand. Um, so we better make it as creative and interesting as possible. No pressure. No pressure. Um, Kate said something interesting where she said, I think she said all designers are collectors, but I guess you could say maybe the same thing's true for creative people generally. And I wondered if you might consider yourself a collector of people. Yeah, I suppose so, yeah. I mean, I, again, like Kate said, I think when I was looking at this and thinking, you know, how to be creative, you know, where do great ideas come from, you don't, you don't think about that. We're, we're like everyone in this room, you know, we just have ideas, it's just that maybe we've executed them in a certain way. So I've got a festival, I've got a radio show, I'm, you know, it's, um, that's one way of doing it. But yeah, without all the people around us, then that wouldn't happen. And yeah, absolutely, our, um, my whole business is built on people. Have we got um, some pictures? Because we did, we did have some pictures, but I'm not quite sure. Oh, yeah. If you want to click on. I'm in control, okay. <coughs> So click. Click. <laughs> that how you do it? Each person has to have a different trick. I have to say it more definitely, not as a question. There we go. Whoops. Okay, here we are. Um, so, lots of people, lots of collaboration, I imagine, as well. Is collaboration an important part of creativity as far as you're concerned? Yeah, I mean, you know, run it, running the... F I, do, I do a lot of different things. Um, again, you know, jack of all trades, um, a lot of things kind of um, averagely. Um, this is a shot at Best of All last year. Um, the theme was wildlife, as you can maybe, maybe tell. And that is a lot of the people that bring Best of All together to make mm -hmm. it happen. You know, yeah, I'm sort of been, I've been thrust forward as the figurehead of Best of All. And yeah, I came up with the idea, but it's those guys and about 2,000 others that sort of make it happen. Mm -hmm. Are there certain people who you have particularly good ideas with? Um, well, my manager who's sat there and he's got the embarrassing sort of weird mask on the right and hasn't really got his outfit together. <laughs> he's good. Um, my wife who's got the, I'm stood there with the weird bird hat on and she's got the badger, mm -hmm. badger left. Um, yeah, I mean, me and Josie, we, Mrs. DeBank, you know, we, we kind of brainstorm everything. We come up with the theme for the fancy dress. We came, we came up with the idea of fancy dress. We pretty much came up with the idea of best of all. So, um, you know, we came up with the idea of the club Sunday Best, we came up mm -hmm. with the idea of the record label. Um, but yeah, well, I mean, I was just with the, with the Zebra earlier, you know, we were, de <laughs> we were debriefing on Camp Festival and thinking about, you know, great different ideas for next year. So all, all those people and, and a lot more mm -hmm. kind of feed into it. So in terms of when you're working with other people, what kind of things work for you? Is it just about talking to each other? Is it about kind of doodling stuff? around, you know, are there certain things that really work for you in terms of making the most of the people you work with? Um, no, I mean, we don't go into, like, big boardrooms and have huge sort of whiteboards and lots of magic markers and stuff like that. It's, it, you know, it might, we might be down the pub or go for a coffee or just sit in the, in the um, you know, in the office and just bat stuff around. And a lot of people come to us individually and just say, hey, how about we do this? It's, it's not like um, a big collective hippie. Mm -hmm gathering where we all sort of share ideas but and to be honest it sounds a bit big-headed but most of the ideas do come from us and mm -hmm. we tend to kind of drive the ideas through and then people kind of fine-tune those on the way. Mm -hmm. So that's people but I also wondered about places are there any particular places where you've had particularly good ideas like maybe walking up a hill in Dorset? Mm. Interesting um I mean London you know we've just moved out of London we've mm -hmm. moved to the Isle of Wight now and sort of totally from <laughs> South London and the hubbub and hustle and bustle and noise. <clears throat> we now live in the middle of a field in, on the Isle of Wight, surrounded by rabbits and chickens and sort of wildlife and there's no noise at all. You can hear a car coming two miles away. So it's, it's um, but both places still give me, you know, loads of inspiration. Um, I think I, they asked me where, where I get inspiration and I said, you know, in the bath. So the bath, the shower. You know, if you sort of pinpoint to different locations in the house, it's probably when my brain kind of turns off a little mm. bit. And where do you stand on TV? Does like telly help? Like Kate was saying, that's something that really helps her sort of shut things off. Does that do that for you, or is there something else that does that for you? It definitely makes me shut off, but pro <laughs> probably doesn't also make me think a lot. Um, no, I, I, you know, I have to drive my kids to school 40 minutes each way twice a day often so that's um that's good time for mm. thinking but yeah I mean I, lo I love some TV but normally I'm sort of I only watch things like that I'm really into like maybe Breaking Bad or 
Twin Peaks or something mm. like that where I really want to watch it and I'm concentrating wholly on that. So <clears throat> it doesn't give me any time to think about anything else. I mean, one thing I wondered, actually, you know, with your label and again with the festival, in fact, with all the things you've done, you've, you've always seemed to bring together lots of interesting different people and also people from kind of different age ranges. So working with really, really brand new artists and then working with people who are like seriously established, you know, your David Lynch's. Mm. Do you think it helps being creative to look for inspiration in lots of different places with lots of different types of people? Yeah, I mean, I don't go out looking for those things. It's just, they just sort of come, come to us. You know, we started a record label 15 years ago and with one artist and then, you know, we were doing the right thing and mm. people kind of came to us. And but lots of, I'm sure lots and lots of people come to you, but the people that you choose cover a, a pretty broad age range and come from pretty different backgrounds. Do you think that's something that's helpful for being creative or just kind of maybe a mark of your way of being creative? That sounds very squeaky. Yeah, I think that's just a, it's just a gut feeling, you know. It's um, well, obviously, you know, you get approached by someone like David Lynch saying, mm. "Can I go on your record label?" You're like, "Yeah, I think so. Yeah, <laughs> you know, you'd be most welcome." Um, you know, other people you have to push a bit harder, but um, it's yeah, it's a gut feeling of what what you think might work. I'm sure it's like the same with Kate. It's like you know, she might have 20 designs in one day, but she's only going to think one of those is actually the right mm. the right one and. Same with me and records and music. It's like, I'll, you know, I get sent for my radio show, I don't know, probably 300 CDs a week, hardly any of which I listen to anymore because I also get sent about three, 300 tunes on, mm. on, on, as MP3s um, on my computer. And so I have to choose what, what is the best um, mm. use and, and what's going to go on my radio show. And it's, it's a gut feeling often. Mm. I mean, you know, one of the things you're doing soon is you're doing a festival, aren't you? A new festival, festival. Leaf. Yeah, yeah. Another festival. Just when um, we haven't got enough festivals in the yeah, world, so we're launching another. Another festival. And I wondered, you know, how do you avoid that kind of... You know, there is sometimes, I think, a drag to the centre of just kind of doing the things that are done because that's what you do at festivals. And I wondered how, with Leaf, how you're going to be trying to keep it... Um, keep it yours, basically. Keep it hmm. yours. Yeah, well, I mean, everything I do, I try and do differently. You know, I, <clears throat> I don't, you know, I don't want to be playing the same records as someone else on Radio One. I'm, you know, I don't want to be booking the same artist as someone else for my festival. It's all very, very kind of. I, I want it to be unique. And you know, when I was a kid, I, you know, I listened to the Pixies or whatever, and I was really hoping that no one else knew about the Pixies, and it was just my discovery. And you know, me and John Peel were the only people that knew about that band. And, you know, then I found out that I wasn't, and. Uh, <laughs> Sorely disappointed, but you know, my brother would get into the Pixies. I'd be like, no, f off, you know, you're not getting into that. That's my band, and you know, I, I've always wanted to be, you know, not not be unique in myself, but uh, you know, whatever I do, <clears throat> to be unique. So, um, with with Leaf, which is a sort of, uh, you know, it's it's not like Sonar in Spain, but that's we're starting. You know, that could be a starting point for it. It's like um, arts and culture meets music, electronic music. So it's London Electronic Arts Festival. And yeah, no one's doing that in London. No. We was like, how come no one's doing some, you know, quite a big sort of a thing, bringing in loads of electronic artists from around the world? So it was a, a lot of it's necessity. It's like, um, you know, we need to make it different in order for people to to buy a ticket. Mm -hmm. You know, that's how I look at creativity. It's like, same with festival. It's like, okay, well, we had an amazing year this year. Elton John was incredible. Snoop was great. Blah blah blah. But it does, you know, as soon as that day is over. You're on to the next one, you've got to sell 55,000 tickets again. It's like, how the fuck are we going to do this? It's like, every year it's like a huge hill to climb. And the only way to do that is to stand out from, from everyone else. I'm actually just trying to scroll forwards mm. to uh, the ship. How did you come up with the idea for the, putting a ship in the middle of your festival? <laughs> um, yeah, that's called the port, and that was the sort of one of the star attractions <laughs> of Best All this year. Um, most people that came into that field actually thought we'd craned in a huge sort of 35,000 tonne ship, but it was built totally from scratch. About four days before that, it was just a pile of scaffold and plywood and paint, and I, I had nothing to do with it in terms of building it, but these incredible guys, Spatial from Oxfordshire, you know, designed the whole thing, spent months building it all off-site, and then came on-site and built it. And, you know, we just wanted to make a splash, excuse the kind of nautical pun, and it, it was um, <coughs> HMS Festival was the theme this year, so we wanted, you know, it was a nautical theme, and we thought, you know, we need a new stage. 
hey, you know, why do a sort of triangle or a square or a circle? Or let's mm -hmm. do a let's do a ship. And yeah, day and night it was just absolutely mobbed with people, people loving it. So, yeah. but you know, again, it was a team team effort. Mm -hmm. you, you said before about that thing about wanting to kind of own stuff yourself and feeling like it's your band, it's your thing, that kind of really personal connection to something. Do you think that people who come to your festivals or go to your events or connect with your label or all those other things, do you think that they get that feeling? Is that what you want them to have? Um, yeah, well I don't know, when we started it it was like 4,000 people and we didn't know what we were doing and it wasn't really, I don't know who it was for, we just loved sort of seeing people having, having a good time and I suppose you know we quickly discovered that people did love having a good time the same way that we did, doing something a bit different, listening to different bands and um, yeah, I th you know, I think um, we sort of tapped into something but it's impossible to tell every year I, t you know, I shit myself when we open the gates and think, oh god, you know, who is going to turn up? It could be 55,000 heavy metal freaks, it could be like 55,000 complete idiots like, and you know, how, how do you know who's going to turn up to this, this thing you've created? So it's, um, it's kind of a leap of faith. Um, it's interesting actually that you'd think after doing a festival like Festival for that long that you'd be completely confident that it would be brilliant because everyone knows it's going to be brilliant. But do you think it's actually useful to have that kind of degree of uncertainty about what you've created until it actually happens? Yeah, I can't remember who said it, but you know, the fear of failure is um, I, I still feel like a seven year old kid in shorts, you know, practicing my trombone and my bedroom and getting shouted at by my dad if it wasn't right and you know I still feel like that every day it's it's um I don't feel like you know a Radio 1 DJ or that I've got these great festivals or got a great record label I'm still <clears throat> I'm still little Robert Gorham from a little village called Warsash on the south coast you know with with you know sort of doubting doubting myself the whole the whole way so not in an insecure way and not not in a sort of a don't beat myself up about it and we, we achieve amazing things but I think unless you've got that fear of failure then you know the, the ability to create is definitely you know it's not there because you've got to create something really amazing to to make it work you know if your record label isn't great if your radio show isn't good you know they'll kick you off and someone else will come along if, if you, you know if you stand up or your t-shirt design isn't great someone else is right behind you so you know that's always that's that's what drives me on it's like um, I, I'm really competitive so you know, I want to know who Secret Garden are booking, I want to know who Latitude are booking, Reading, Leeds, we're in the same, sort of we've somehow moved into the same vein as them now, and even Glastonbury, it's like, you know, that affects how our tickets sell, so, yeah, the fear of failure and kind of trying to be competitive is a lot of it too. So talking about, you know, you're sort of heading into an area there of um, sort of commercial success as well as creative, keeping things creatively interesting, how do you balance the needs of doing something interesting with doing something that has to kind of make sense? financially? Uh, well, anyone who works with me knows that I, I don't really see the two <laughs> aligning and I'm, I'm terrible with money, I sort of, yeah, I've just never been driven by money, so it's all about, um, it's all about creating the best show possible, it's all about creating the best record label, the, you know, the best new, new festival, whatever, but it's, it's um, money is the last thing that comes into it, as, as long as we can bank it, as long as we can make it happen, then the financial aspect is, um, is the people up there to worry about. So, um, I, yeah, I, I, I'm not great on that. And, um, <clears throat> you know, best of all, we could strip that, that, you know, that costs like 120 grand to build. We could strip that out and we could have had that and I could buy a new car, but no, you know, we've come out of best of all again with, you know, and it's, it's, it's makes money now, but it's, we could make a shed load of money if, um, if we stripped all the stuff out, but then I don't think people would actually come. So <laughs> it's this sort of balancing act. Well, one thing I did want to ask, you, you mentioned a minute ago about this kind of seven-year-old self in your shorts. Do you think it's possible to learn creativity? Is it something that can be taught? Is it something that you can kind of get from other people? No, I mean, I, I grew up in a tiny village, middle of nowhere, very traditional, you know, learnt to play the trombone, was in a, my dad's brass band, was in sailing. You know, I, I was 15 before I bought my first record probably, you know, people get asked, oh yeah, you know, I was seven and I was into the Sex Pistols, it's, you know, it's, it, that wasn't me. It, lies. It's normally either lies or, or people that were, were uber cool and they grew up in some privileged part of West London and they were sort of, you know, they, they, did, they did get those, those things, but no, I mean, I, you know, I was an absolutely terribly shy kid until, I don't know, probably until I was about 25 and things started happening, so, um, 
yeah, I, I, don't, I don't know where the creativity, if that's what it is, came from. I, I can only think that it's the people that I've sort of been surrounded by that it's kind of rubbed off. But yeah, I mean, every day I have loads and loads of ideas. Um, so I think it's just in people's brains, and I'm sure everyone out, out there has just as many ideas. What, can you tell us some of the ideas you've had in the last couple of days? Um, <laughs> well, we, no, weirdly, I just went to the toilet after the guy had mic'd me up, and I was having a wee and thinking the guy could hear me, and <laughs> it got me thinking about writing, because I want to write a book, and it was, I sort of thought about some murder, murder mystery thing where the guy was um, listening in on... Anyway, yeah, I haven't formulated the plot quite yet. <laughs> but yeah, I, I sort of, yeah. Do you have, do you have notebooks? No, I, no, I tend to sort well, of Well, just a very good memory. Um, no, not even a good memory. I, yeah, I'm t terrible memory. I just, if something's good, it will probably, probably pop back up mm. again. Um, I've got this idea, if, any, if there's any investors out there that are interested in savoury foods, that for this um, ketchup and mustard hybrid called Custard, with a K, <laughs> which is like a tube, half red, half yellow. So instead of having cafes with like a red and a yellow thing, you just sort of combine them into one. Like openings on both ends? Um, we well have two openings, so you have ke ketchup or mustard, but then you also have a sort of dual spout where you can combine <laughs> the two. <laughs> that sounds like crazy toothpaste. Yeah, kind yeah. of like toothpaste, but you know, ki kids especially could, mm. could be into that. Yeah, I, I think <laughs> custard. It's the next one in your, your farm of things. Yeah, maybe Innocent would uh, like to be. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> innocent Custard? <laughs> okay then. Um, you kind of said that you have good ideas in the bath, and I know Innocent have been asking people all the way through these sessions about where they have their best ideas. But can you tell us about a particular place where you had a particularly good idea, maybe one of the things that you've invented with Bestival or the label or some of the artists or the book that you've just done? Um, <laughs> plug. Yeah, no, I, I mean, this not, wasn't my idea, but the, um, the Lionel Richie head, you know, that was, um, that was a cool... Have we past that? Or is that still to come? That's, um, that's Lionel Richie's head. Uh, so, yeah, that was um, some guys from Barcelona just, just emailed us and said, would you like us to bring Lionel Richie's head to best of all? <laughs> so, obviously, didn't take too much thinking about, and... Uh, you know, this is exactly the sort of thing that will people talk, talked about. And, you know, even as we were inflating it on site, I was thinking, God, you know, is anyone going to actually get this? But it was like one of the most talked about things on site, apart from the mm -hmm. port. And you know, they, they emailed us, you know, and said we need ten thousand quid to make this thing happen. You know, to actually build Lionel's head and to <laughs> bring it over and stuff. And so, yeah, it was you know another thing that you just sort of collaboration. Mm -hmm thinking outside the box, um, you know, they've already got another idea of where, they, where uh, the next... Um, where their head's at. <laughs> yeah, where their head's at and the next stunt. So, um, uh -huh. I didn't really answer your question, did I? About where I had a great well, idea, but... You had a great idea at your inbox. Yeah, it was someone possibly, else's yeah. idea. Yeah, it's other, other people's ideas a lot of the time. I mean, you know, we had the idea for Best of All when, when we were doing... Um, Radio 1 asked, just after I'd started on Radio 1, about... 10, 11 years ago then, Radio 1 asked me to DJ at Glastonbury um, and we, we got Fatboy Slim who was at the time one of the biggest mm -hmm. and still is a you know, huge, huge name and we had Basement Jacks and we managed to pull in all these favours and threw this party on a stage in, in Glastonbury, just bought about 200 animal heads, like rubber animal heads and a load of lilos and stuff and I know it sounds stupid but at the time no one was really doing anything different, it was all just like... DJs behind a booth and we created this huge party and that was the kernel that kind of <coughs> sprouted best of all. It was like we went away from that and thought, actually people were really into that and maybe we could do something something of our own. So that was a sort of time and a place and where something actually mm. happened. Okay, I guess just the final thing then is we've talked a lot about actually how useful failure is and how that can be really a, a good thing to happen. And I wondered if you could tell us about something that hadn't worked. Just no, to end on a high it's all point. Work. <laughs> <laughs> um, crikey! I mean, you know, there's been loads of gigs that haven't sold or record records that haven't particularly mm. sold. But you know, I mean, more like like a crazy idea, like a mad, amazing thing that you really wanted to do or you've always wanted to do, but hasn't quite come to fruition yet. Um, well, 
I, I have asked if I can throw the first festival in space with Richard Branson. So um, that hasn't come into fruition yet, but hasn't been knocked back yet. So uh, <coughs> watch this space. Next stop, the moon. <laughs> yeah. Well, I think we should just say thank you very much. Cool. Thank you.